There's a new D&D movie coming out next year. The first trailer has been released and I'd take a look at all the Easter eggs and game references and guess about the plot details coming right up on RPG Retro Reviews. Hello everyone and welcome to my RPG Retro Reviews channel. Normally I am reviewing old school modules and games, but how often do we get a D&D movie? So I thought it would be fun to go over all the Dungeons and Dragons references that I can spot in this trailer and then take a guess at what this movie is going to be about. Now I'm not going to show this trailer in its entirety, but there is a link in the description if you haven't seen it yet. But I am going to go into a bit of detail you'll probably not see it on other channels. So let's go ahead and get started. Alright, as we uh, begin, we can definitely see this is the city of Neverwinter in the Forgotten Realms, which I'll go into in just a moment. One thing, this structure here is not on any Neverwinter maps, but is the arena shown in just a moment, clearly created just for the movie. Look for map updates from Wizards of the Coast. When the movie releases to be sure. Neverwinter is home to several earth moats. These are sections of land that due to the influence of magic strangely float above the earth. The more famous one in Neverwinter's is the Moonstone Mask, a festhall and tavern which should be visible in the shot hovering above the harbor. And here's an interior shot of the city. It's a really clean city. However, note the dragon statue here that we'll come back to that in a moment. This is a shot of a dungeon in the Underdark. I think this might be Grackle's Toe from the Out of the Abyss adventure. Grackle's Toe is a city of Dugar, Dwarves, and Darrow. The city is bisected by a massive chasm called Lodgar's Faro. But in Out of the Abyss, the chasm is said to be 200 feet deep with a packed gravel floor. Many bridges cross the chasm, which you can see here by this map. The forges of the city are powered by the flame of an ancient red dragon named Thumberchod, which will be important in a moment. And then in the next shot, you definitely get an interior of a temple in Gracklestow. Note the Dugar priest statues. Here they've uncovered some kind of magical helmet. This seems like the opening to the movie. This is a neat shot. Uh, here we're seeing a reverse shot looking out to sea from before uh, in the city of Neverwinter. Note that if you take a look at the map of Neverwinter, this would seem to be mirror reflected. However, you can clearly see two of the three bridges that bisect Neverwinter River, Sleeping Dragon, Winged Wyvern, and Dolphin. The Winged Wyvern Bridge is the middle bridge. Let me also draw your attention to the arena structure to the left of the castle. If we do a little zoom in, we can clearly see two massive warrior statues. A cool shot of a black dragon spitting acid. Whose army is this? It's hard to say, but this standard in the middle of the battlefield might be a clue. If anyone has an idea, please let me know in the comments. Note Chris Pine's character here is supposedly a bard, but he is wearing full armor in this shot, and you can also see his harper pin. In my opinion, Pine's character is a multi-class character with only a few levels in bard. There's a lot more to him than what's indicated in the trailer, to be sure. I'm also certain this is the Horn of Orcus. This magic item comes from Orcus himself, who cut them off and gave them to his avatar during the time of the Calamity in Exandria from Critical Role. The horns, and there are two, apparently allowed for a way to open a doorway between the Abyss and the Prime Material Plane. There was an entire quest in Campaign 1 of Critical Role for one of the horns, and only one was ever recovered. The location of the second remained a mystery. And this, my friends, is the leader of the Red Wizards of Thay, a lich named Sas Tam in the realm of Thay. Note the horn of Orcus in his hands 
In the Forgotten Realms, Fey is a mageocracy and Zastam is a necromancer lich who is its ruler. They maintain a massive labor force of zombie undead and have the highest concentration of undead in all of Faroon. The Lich himself constantly sends his red wizards abroad all across the continent of Faroon in search of artifacts of power. His goal is to create a massive realm of undead, and given that Orcus is the demon lord of the undead, it becomes quite clear why Zastam would want his horn, which would be quite a powerful artifact in his hands which could probably help him achieve his goal on a massive scale. Note in this shot, all the people crowded around Zastam as he completes his ritual, and then all of them fleeing and being stopped by a cadre of red wizards. My thought here is Zast is using the horn to turn all these people to undead zombies, and then they realize their peril at the last moment and try to flee. This is the shield spell, pretty much how I imagined it would look. I still haven't been able to figure out what forest this is. If you know, please leave your theory in the comments. And here it looks like they are heading to Ten Towns, uh, Icewind Dales, and the Spine of the World region. The prison here is Revel's End, which appears in the Rime of the Frost Maiden Adventure. And here we are back in Cracklestow. Note that we have a group of Theatian knights approaching the party. Uh, the Thunder Wave spell. This is why you don't cast large area of effect damaging spells in the city, folks. Oops. And here's a Tiefling Druid that can shapeshift into an owlbear. Not sure how this works in the movie, but as many have already pointed out, it's not really an option typically open to player characters. Though I do love the transformation effect here from a horse to an owlbear and then back to a Tiefling. That's pretty cool. Now, there's a quick shot of that brass dragon statue from earlier coming to life. This is a really neat effect for the Dimension Door spell. Some have speculated that this is a shot of Menza Baranzan here, but I don't think so. I'm pretty sure this is Crackle's Toe again. And there we see one of the Theatian Knights casting the green flame blade spell. Not surprising at all that a warrior from a majocracy might have some spell casting ability. Green Flame Blade is just a cantrip after all. Regardless, I get the feeling they do not fare too well against the party's paladin. Note that now we're getting a nice close up of those warrior statues from earlier in front of the arena, and the red wizard seems to be casting Fireball, which is then canceled out by a globe of invulnerability. <laughs> that looks great. And here we are now inside the arena. Very interesting magical monsters. And the place creates a labyrinth. That's interesting. And totally appropriate for a fantasy setting. Seeing as in real life the Roman Colosseum would have had full on naval battles. This is Hugh Grant's character. Supposedly the main villain of the movie. Which I'm pretty sure is nonsense. The clear villain in this movie is the Red Wizards of Thay and Sas Tam. My thought here is that he is the master of the arena, very similar to Jeff Goldblum's character Grandmaster in Thor Ragnarok, since they are clearly riffing on Marvel with this movie. I love the mimic. Very monster manual accurate in its rendering. A mimic exudes a sticky substance and will pull you into its jaws if it gets a hold of you. I love the way it sticks to the wall and then pulls itself. Definitely a great scene. Jumping into a gelatinous cube to escape a displacer beast. Interesting choice. You can clearly see the remains of a previous victim here. I'm interested to see how this strategy works out for them. And this is a red wizard dodging a cantrip. Frostbite maybe? And then Misty Step to avoid the Owlbear. Classic wizard escape maneuver. And this looks to be about 30 feet away. Checks out. And this rather plump red dragon is totally Thumberchild in the city of Cracklestow. Red dragons are purposefully hatched and raised there, spending all of their lives in but a single cavern, powering the magical forges of the city with their flame breath. They grow fat from being fed by hand by the keepers of the flame and are ultimately slain before they become too much of a threat to the city. 
They are kept docile through bribes of treasure, food, and the psionic abilities of the keepers. In the Out of the Abyss adventure, the Thieves Guild of Cracklestow, the Grey Ghosts, stole the red dragon egg that was supposed to hatch Thumberchild's replacement. Thus, Thumberchild was in the midst of a true awakening, able to throw off the keeper's psionic control and becoming restless from being hand-fed and beginning to have designs on taking over the city. In the story, the player characters can actually become agents of Thumberchild. Thumberchild has a massive treasure hoard, including a bunch of magic items. It could be our heroes need something that now lies buried in the dragon's hoard. Of course, the dragon will be none too pleased with them. <laughs> this is a great shot. I've heard the core plot of this movie is this is Ocean's Eleven meets Guardians of the Galaxy. It's a heist movie, and that seems to track with what we see in the trailer. Chris Pine's character Edgin is clearly a harper, and the harpers are certainly going to be opposing the plots of the Red Wizards of Thay and their lich ruler Zastam. Michelle Rodriguez's barbarian character Holda is his partner in this quest, and the two of them set about recruiting their team to find the magic items they will need to destroy Orcus's horn or break into Zastam's fortress or something along those lines. It also seems fairly obvious that the various items the team are questing for are also wanted by the Red Wizards. Mayhem and hijinks ensues. As far as final thoughts on this goes, first of all, I'm just happy there's a D&D &D movie that is really attempting something mainstream and actually uses D&D &D lore. This definitely looks Marvel-esque, and I'm a big fan of the Marvel movies, especially Guardians of the Galaxy. Given how most D&D &D sessions go... I really think this is probably the right approach. That said, my real criticism is in the use of the Led Zeppelin track, Whole Lot of Love, which seemed a bit ridiculous. When Marvel used the immigrant song from Led Zeppelin and Thor Ragnarok, it was entirely appropriate. One of the coolest entrance scenes in a movie ever. The song is about Vikings raiding. Its lyrics mention the hammer of the gods and Valhalla. Thor is a god of the Viking and wields a hammer. It makes sense. Conversely, a Led Zeppelin song where the singer is openly bragging about the size of his, um, love probably doesn't apply to this movie. Or maybe this is a different kind of D&D movie than what I'm thinking. <laughs> Perhaps not. Either way, many Led Zeppelin songs are fantasy inspired. Jimmy Page and Robert Plant were both avid readers of Tolkien, so it's not the use of Led Zeppelin I find inappropriate. Give a listen to Misty Mountain Hop or Ramble On, both of which totally would have worked here. Whole Lot of Love is just a lazy choice in my opinion. Hopefully that's not indicative of other choices made in this movie. In the 2000s D&D movie, in addition to the story being horrible, there really wasn't much in the way of anything actually Dungeons & Dragons lore related that appeared in it. There is a treasure trove of outstanding D&D lore that's been written over the last 50 years, and just by this trailer alone, it's clear that quite a bit of attention to detail has been paid in this regard. It's set in the Forgotten Realms. It features classic locations from that setting, the city of Neverwinter, Ten Towns, the Dugar city of Grecklestow. There are identifiable D&D &D spells, character classes, races, monsters, and factions. All of this bodes well for the movie's potential, and if it's successful, we will have a new batch of players eager to find our tables, DMs, which is a good thing. If it fails, well, D&D &D might just have reached its peak which would be a real shame. And well, that's about all I have for you for now. Thank you all so much for watching. Please light up the comments section on your thoughts on the movie. Keep it respectful and have fun. And I hope you found this overview of the D&D movie trailer fun and enjoyable. I'd like to take the time to thank all my patrons who make this channel what it is and these videos possible. Thank you so much. Uh, as I said, next week, I'll be taking a look at the City of Greyhawk box set. Please give this video a like, comment, and share. Please check out my Teespring store for great gaming swag, t-shirts, carry bags, coffee cups, and more. Join the channel's Facebook page, RPG Retro Reviews, and consider supporting the channel by becoming a patron yourself. 
Or alternatively, you can just send a tip through the PayPal tip jar. A link is in the description. As always, my friends, may your D20 roll true and game on.